Welcome back to the Retro Tech Repair Shop. Today, someone has brought in a not working plasma ball. So I'm gonna do a little bit of an investigation on this and see if it's possible to repair it. So first things first, let's just confirm it doesn't work. It's got a switch on the side, off, on and audio. Switch it on, I can't hear any high frequency humming. Nothing's working at all. Doesn't say if this is AC or DC output. So I'm going to select AC first. Let's see what we've got. There's nothing. Let's try and see if it's DC. Okay, so it's DC output. It's five volts and that is working. Right, let's take the unit apart. This is a good reason why you should always check the rating of things before you delve in too much to trying to fix a problem. I was given this unit with this power supply and as you saw we tested this at 5 volt DC but the actual plasma ball itself says power 12 volt DC. So I've been given the wrong power supply. So the next test will be to hook up a 12 volt supply. Actually it says DC 12 volts on the unit as well. So maybe this is just been supplied with the wrong power supply. So I haven't got a 12 volt power supply to hand from one of these adapters, but I have from a bench power supply. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it apart because I wanna see what's inside it. And I'm gonna hook the power supply directly up to the printed circuit board inside. Just remove the high tension, high voltage cable from inside. So on the board we have a high voltage or can be known as a high tension transformer. It has multiple secondary windings to step the voltage up from the 12 volts, 24 volts, etc. up to probably about 2.5 thousand volts. We have a CD4069 chip here, which is a six inverter circuit, MOS, CMOS chip. And this is, this is the oscillator control circuit that does the switching at the high frequency. We have another chip here. Also on the board, the other main component is this TIP122 chips, Darlington 5 amp complementary silicon power transistor. We have a few electrolytic capacitors, which is a transistor, a few resistors, a few diodes, and we have a microphone here. That obviously controls the uh, response with the audio function. So my quick understanding of this circuit is that this oscillator here fires this transistor, and this provides the high frequency switching required and the output high enough to de-energize and energize this transformer winding at high frequency. This then steps the voltage up from 12, 24 volts, somewhere in that region, up to about 2.5 kV. And this is the positive from that transformer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this board and I'm gonna see if I can get onto this socket here and provide it with 12 volts and see what happens. All right. And solder a couple of leads onto here to connect the 12 volt supply onto. So the positive is the centre pin. Hook that up. Negative. So our 12 volts connected. It's not pulling any current at the moment. So make sure I don't get my hands too close to that. Switch it on. Okay, it's pulling 0 0.09 of an amp, 90 milliamps or so. Okay, let's give this a try. See so if we can get it to draw an arc. Oh, there we go. 
So we're pulling one and a half amps at the moment. So I stretch the arc, reduces slightly. So the principle with HV high voltage, medium voltage switch gear to control these high voltages, if you've got an arc drawn, you want to quench the arc, cool it, stretch it, etc. They use various principles to try and do it. Keep it moving around as well so it doesn't heat up the surface too much and cause damage. So what I mean by stretching the arc is that if I move further away, the voltage difference between the two points isn't enough to keep the arc going. I need to be close to it to start the initial process going then I can stretch the arc out. Another principle is that you quench the arc i.e. you can blow it out like so. Also holding these pliers like this I'm actually becoming partially charged by this so if I touch something that's grounded I will actually get a whack and I have already proved that by just trying that and I didn't enjoy it you can actually smell the ozone that the arc is creating <laughs> if you've got one of the home air purifiers that uses a high voltage they produce ozone so you'll know what that smells like in fact it's one of the things that we look out for when we enter a high voltage substation because if there's ozone being produced then there is a discharge going on somewhere. I'm sure Tesla really enjoyed these experiments when he first tried them. Seeing this for the first time. Okay well the circuit's obviously working okay so let's put it back together again. So power's on. The plasma spider filaments have been formed. As you can see the center tube um, is now at a voltage say about two and a half kV and a high frequency and that is allowing these conduction paths to the outer glass shell to form and allow current to discharge um, basically like a capacitor from the center element across through the noble gases inside the tube which are argon, neon, etc, etc, a mixture of, depending on what colour effect you want. When I approach it, I'm a ground potential effectively, which is different to what the glass is. So what it will do, it will see me as a lower resistance conduction path, and it will want to send as much current through me as possible. So this is why we get these much brighter, much hotter filaments formed. If I leave my finger on there for a while the actual discharge going through me starts to warm the tube very quickly. Okay so this has been great fun to play with. Very simple problem, it was just given to me with the wrong power supply. So I'm going to box it back together again and give it back to the person who it belongs to. Just last job to do is to put it onto the audio trigger and go out with a bit of Queen. Thanks for watching.